organizers of this conference. It is an honor to be here and to address you within the general theme of, of this conference, religion, harmony, and sustainable development. And then the theme of this specific session as religion or faiths and sustainable development. I would like to speak to you on freedom of religion and sustainable development. And I would like to do it from a South African perspective. Freedom of religion is seen as the most fundamental human right that exists. It is also the most precious right and privilege that a person can have. Freedom of religion is also a very powerful tool for sustainability. Throughout the ages, many people have paid with their life because the right to freedom of religion was not granted to them. Religion and religious convictions guide the life of a person from the day of birth to the day of their death. Religion, in this sense, refers to the relationship of a human being to an other bigger than him or herself, which they worship. Sometimes it is an idea or a philosophy that determines the religion of a person. Sometimes a religious, uh, de religion determines people's view on life and death and what happens to a person after death. Religion also determines how a person sees this world and the whole of the universe. Religion plays a role in the choice that a person makes with regard to a partner uh, and the way in which they raise and educate their children. Religion plays a very strong role in a person's social relationships, their values in life, how they see society, and in what way they contribute to society. Their view of other people, what are the sources of their comfort in trying times? How do they see society, uh, uh, how th they live life and approach death? Religion also plays a very important role in how people see their future and the way in which to reach that future or develop towards that future. The Constitution of South Africa of 1996 determines in Section 15 that every person in South Africa has uh, the right to freedom of religion. Section 7.2 of the Constitution determines that the state must respect, protect, promote, and fulfill the, const the, the, the rights in the Bill of Rights. This includes the right to freedom of conscience, religion, thought, belief, and opinion. This means that the state of South Africa does not merely take note of the religious diversity in our country. Uh, it has a specific task uh, with regard to religious freedom. Religion and freedom of religion are very important for the people and the state of South Africa. It is often a problem that many citizens of the country and also employees of the state do not always understand what exactly freedom of religion means. And that is why uh, a few academics started talking about freedom of religion and what it means. We got together in conferences and we, we eventually the notion came up, but let's formulate a charter of religious right or let's just put something on paper initially about what freedom of religion means. The first concept of the formulation was widely circulated to all known religions, churches, and religious communities in South Africa. 
theologians, jurists, philosophers, religious and community organizations, state jurists, uh, and individuals were asked to give their opinion on this first formulation of a Charter of Religious Rights. Eventually, the South African Charter of Religious Rights and Freedoms was endorsed by 91 leaders of religions and religious organizations uh, in the chamber councils of the University of Stellenbosch, of Johannesburg, on the 20th of October, 2010. The signatures, the signatories came from the Jewish community, various Christian denominations uh, like the Coptic, the Anglican, the Roman Catholic, the Baptist community, the Latter-day Saints, the Ismail, uh, Ismail community, the Church, uh, the, the Church of England, the Evangelical Lutheran Church, etc., the Reformed churches, but. The signatories also came from the uh, Hindu community, the Coordinating Council of the South African Tamil Federation, the National House of Traditional Leaders, the African Traditional Origins. They were all there and they put their signature to the Charter of Religious Rights and Freedom to say we endorse this. After the endorsement ceremony, a South African Council for Religious Rights and Freedoms was formed and a steering committee elected. It was the task of this council uh, to keep the charter in trust for all those believers from all the different religions in South Africa who endorsed the charter. And they also had to work, and that is their second task, towards bringing the charter before parliament, for parliament to take note of the charter and to say we recognize this. And the wording that we chose to bring this document before parliament was the following. In compliance with the encouragement for public involvement in legislation, and of Article 234 of the Constitution, which allows for additional charters of rights to be accepted by Parliament, the South African Council for Religious Rights and Freedoms, representing between 15 and 20 million believers from many religions in South Africa, humbly but firmly request Parliament to officially receive and take note of the South African Charter of Religious Rights and Freedom. As a document endorsed by the religions of the country and explicating what they understand their religious rights and freedoms are, which is guaranteed for everyone in the South African uh, Constitution in Article 15. The task is well underway. And we really hope that within the next few weeks, this document will, become, will come before Parliament. We do not ask Parliament to accept it, because then Parliament will be in a position also to change it. It is a document from the religions in South Africa, and it remains their property. And they have that document uh, to tell them what the rights and freedoms are that they have. Now, what we say in the Charter of Religious Rights and Freedoms are the following 12 freedoms and rights. Firstly, the right to believe and the right what you may believe or not believe. Secondly, the right not to be forced about your belief. Thirdly, the right to impartiality and protection by the state in respect of religion. Fourthly, every person's right to private, public, individual, or joint observance or exercise of their religion. In the first place, the right of persons to maintain traditions of systems of religious, 
personal, matrimonial, and family law that is not inconsistent with the Constitution. In the sixth place, the right of every person to freedom of expression in respect of religion. Seventh, the right of every person to be educated or to educate their children or have them educated in accordance with religious or philosophical training and instruction. Number eight, the right of every person to receive and provide religious education, training, and instruction. The state may subsidize such education, training, and instruction. Number nine, every religion has the right to institutional freedom. The right of every religion to determine its own confessions, doctrines, and ordinances, and to regulate its own affairs. Every religious institution is subject to the law of the land, resulting from the exercise of the right in the charter. Number 10, the right of all religions in South Africa who qualifies as a juristic person to receive tax, uh, exempt charitable and other benefits from the state. Number 11, the right of every religious person to solicit, receive, manage, allocate, and spend voluntary financial and other forms of support and contributions. The confidentiality of such support and contributions must be respected. And finally, number 12, every religious person has the right to conduct relief upliftment, social justice, developmental, charity, and welfare work in communities, and also to establish, maintain, and contribute to charity and welfare associations. On August, in August 2015, uh, some explanatory notes on the charter was approved by the executive committee and it has been sent to all our members in an attempt to help them to understand all the better the religious rights and liberties that they have. The South African Charter of Religious Rights and Freedoms is of little avail for those who do not endorse it. In, a ca in, the case, in that case, the courts of the land will merely apply the existing laws should a religious body become, come before it. If a religious body in South Africa who has endorsed the charter come before the courts, the courts will have to, make, to take note that uh, the charter in, take the charter into account as being endorsed by that specific religious body. My last paragraph. The South African Charter of Religious Rights and Freedoms is a necessary document for religious bodies in South Africa to understand what their religious rights and freedoms are. It is also useful for the authorities to understand what religions perceive about themselves to be their rights and freedoms. As Justice Albi Sachs wrote in 1990, ideally, in South Africa, all religious organizations and persons concerned with the study of religion would get together and draft a charter of religious rights and responsibilities. It would be up to the participants themselves to define what they consider to be their fundamental rights. The South African Charter of Religious Rights and Freedoms is a powerful document to create, sustain peace and harmony in South Africa, and we believe it can also be useful and of help for other countries and the regions. I thank you for your attention. <laughs>